Okay, now we want to talk about the spinal cord. Um, I've drawn a really bad drawing up here of a spinal cord just to give you an idea of what we're looking at and then I'll show it to you on the models. But remember, you've got gray matter and white matter in the nerve, central nervous system. Gray matter always means that you're talking about cell bodies of neurons. White matter means you're looking at that myelinated axons and stuff like that. Remember the myelin is made of a lipoprotein and think of fats like if you cut a steak before you cook it, it's nice and hard white fat. Well you get that white myelin-y fat coating on the um, processes and that's what causes white matter. So you have gray matter and white matter. In the spinal cord, the gray matter forms this kind of butterfly shape in the center of the spinal cord. So all of this would be full of cell bodies of different neurons. Well, if you have cell bodies inside the central nervous system, they get into groups and we call those a nucleus. Let me get a pen that can write. So a nucleus is a group of cell bodies inside the central nervous system. Um, if you have a group of cell bodies outside the central nervous system, like you would have right over here, let's say that's a group of cell bodies, then you would call that a ganglion. So a ganglion is simply a group of cell bodies of neurons outside the nervous system. Inside the nervous system, you call it a nucleus. So you've got this gray matter that forms this kind of butterfly shape in the spinal cord that is primarily composed of cell bodies of neurons and they're grouped together into similar functioning groups, okay? Then, you've gotta figure out if you're looking at the dorsal or the ventral side of the spinal cord. Well, the way I always do it is look for this dorsal root ganglion. Remember the ganglion is a group of cell bodies on the outside of the central nervous system? So this big bulb area right here, and you can see it on your uh, spinal cord model right here, it's this big bulb right there and right there. That's gonna be your dorsal root ganglion. So if this is the dorsal root ganglion, then that makes this whole thing right here the dorsal root. So you have a dorsal root and a ventral root. The dorsal root is gonna carry sensory information into the central nervous system. So you're gonna have sensory information coming in this way, like that. The cell bodies are gonna be in that dorsal root ganglion. This is usually gonna be of uh, unipolar neurons, sensory neurons. All right, so then that makes this the ventral root, and the ventral root always carries motor information. So it's gonna have motor neurons coming out from this gray matter, so their cell bodies are gonna be in the gray matter, and they're gonna come out and go this way. So you've got information going in to the central nervous system through the dorsal root, you've got information coming out of the central nervous system through this ventral root, and these two roots come together and form what's known as a spinal nerve. Now, and that's not part of the central nervous system? None of this outside of here is part of the central nervous system. The spinal cord is right in here, and so the, the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. So this is outside of the central nervous system, so that makes these um, peripheral nervous system material. So you've got the dorsal root carrying in sensory information, the ventral root carrying motor information. Those come together and form that spinal nerve. So your spinal nerves carry mixed information, both motor and sensory. All right, so if this is the dorsal side and this is the ventral side, then that's gonna make this the dorsal horn of gray matter. And that makes this down here and here the ventral horn of gray matter. The dorsal horn, let's see, wait a minute, ventral horn, okay? The dorsal horn is gonna primarily have cell bodies of these small neurons called interneurons that kind of synapse inside the central nervous system here. The ventral horn is gonna have primarily cell bodies of motor neurons that are carrying information away from the central nervous system. Inside the gray matter, you've also got this circle here it's an empty circle. That's the central canal of the spinal cord. The central canal is full of uh, cerebrospinal fluid. Okay? Stop. All right, so your central canal carries cerebrospinal fluid, and you've got your dorsal horn of gray matter, your ventral horn of gray matter, and then you've got your dorsal root and your ventral root, your dorsal root ganglion, and then you've got all this matter surrounding that 
gray matter, and this is known as white matter. And remember, it's white because it is myelinated nerve fibers um, or myelinated uh, axons that are coming through here. Now, what's the difference between a, a nerve and a tract? Well, if you have a myelinated fiber outside of the central nervous system, you're going to call that a nerve. If you have a myelinated fiber inside of the central nervous system, so if you've got myelinated fibers running through here, then these would be called tracts. So a tract is going to be a group of similarly functioning myelinated fibers within the central nervous system. A nerve is going to be a group of myelinated fibers running outside the central nervous system. So if we look at our models, let's go ahead and show you these different things here. All right. This is going to be our uh, spinal cord right here. So this is all central nervous system. And you can see it's covered with the different duras. Um, you've got this blue here, which is the dura mater, which is that thick outer coating. And then you've got the kind of spidery, webby looking gray stuff. That's going to be your arachnoid mater. And you'd have cerebrospinal fluid floating all around that. And then you'd also have cerebrospinal fluid floating in your central canal. It's kind of hard to see in here. Um, and then your pia mater would be hugged up right against this spinal cord like that. All right, so you find that big bulging dorsal root ganglion. So that tells you this is the dorsal side, and then this is going to be the ventral side. So there's your dorsal root ganglion. There's your dorsal root. There's your ventral root. Dorsal root and ventral root come together to form a spinal nerve. Remember, your spinal nerve carries both sensory and motor information. So you've got sensory information coming in to this dorsal root ganglion and synapsing in here with the gray matter, or the dorsal horn of gray matter. Then you've got the ventral horn of gray matter that is carrying information that is motor going out through that ventral root. And then the dorsal and ventral root come together to form that spinal nerve, which carries both sensory and motor information. Then you've got all this white matter surrounding the gray matter. These are going to be myelinated fibers, and you see these different uh, colors here. That is just delineating different tracts. So you could have like a spinothalamic tract where it goes from the thalamus to the spine and different things like that. Um, but you have all these little tracts running in this white matter. But you just need to know that this is ventral white matter, and this would, or excuse me, dorsal white matter. That would be the ventral white matter down here. Um, the only other thing you need to know actually is nothing, so let me just let you see it again on this other model. Um, again, look for your dorsal root ganglion. That tells you this is the dorsal root. There's your ventral root. There's your spinal nerve where they come together. This is all white matter of the spinal cord. This kind of greenish colored here, it's at two different levels. That's showing you the gray matter of the spinal cord, so that would be the dorsal horn of gray. It's primarily interneuron cell bodies. Then the ventral horn of gray matter, which is primarily uh, motor neuron cell bodies. And then, of course, your central canal, you can see it better right in here, is full of spinal, uh, cerebrospinal fluid. And that's it. Okay, one more thing I forgot, though. Remember that all this information, this sensory information that's coming into the spinal cord and the brain, um, it's both somatic, which means it comes from your body, um, and you're outside of your body and visceral, which means it's going to come from your internal organs. And that'll be important later on when you're learning about referred pain and things like that.